In this video, we wire the control panel door, and that's coming up next. The Control Panel Build Series brought to you in part by Electric Brewing Supply, supplier of turnkey control panels, complete DIY kits, as well as individual parts and components for your electric brewing needs. Use the link in the description below or visit them at ebrewsupply.com. Hey, how's it going? My name is Brian. I'd like to welcome you to the channel. If you're interested in electric brewing, DIY how-to videos just like this one and all other home brewing related stuff, be sure to click the subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss the next video. Not a lot to talk about in this particular video at the beginning because we've got a lot of wiring to do. I'm going to try to get as much done on the control panel face or the door as I can. If you stay tuned to the end of the video, I will be reviewing everything. I tried to keep the edit really, really tight on this one so it jumps pretty quick through the wiring process that I do, but I will explain everything towards the end. And I have a question for you. What are you working on right now that's electric brewing related? And if you're not working on anything electric brewing related, what would you like to start working on? Leave a comment down below and let us know what you're working on or what you're thinking of working on. Let's get to the video. All right, before we get going, I just want to quickly mention that uh, I have labeled most everything to help for identification purposes since we're wiring it backwards from what we see on the outside. And then I've also taken the door off so that I can wire it a little bit easier and film it easier. Um, if you do take it off, make sure that whenever you do set it down on the table, you put some rags down, kind of like what I've done, just to protect the face of everything so that it doesn't get scratched. Um, and that's pretty much it. Let's get started wiring.
so let's review what we've done so far. So let's start with the neutral circuit, which are the white wires. And everything that is 110 volts needs a neutral for the completion of its circuit. So the light over here is where we're starting at. And there will be another wire that will come in from the back panel, and I'll discuss that here in just a minute. So we daisy chain around to all of the different components that are 110 volts. The other pump switch, and a note about the pump switches, they are lighted pump switches, so that is the reason why there is a neutral running to them. The pumps themselves will get a neutral and hot wire and everything over there in the panel. There will be a, another hot wire that runs over to this terminal here from the panel. We'll discuss that again in a minute. But um, So it does need a neutral as well as a power. There's you got the buzzer, it needs a neutral. You've got the element lamp, that needs a neutral. These are both, actually these are both contactor lamps. The element lamps are white, the contactor lamps are amber. Then it comes around, you've got the light up here for the actual e-stop circuit. If the e-stop is engaged, this light will be on. Then you've got the timer needs a neutral. All of the PIDs need a neutral, so you can see we daisy chain those around. And then moving on to the 110 volt circuit for all of your hot wires, for all of your 110 volt com components. There will actually be a couple of wires that come in from the back panel, and I'll discuss that in just a second, to actually switch the entire panel on via the key switch here. But then we've got a hot wire that runs around to the pump light that comes around and provides a hot wire for the actual pump itself. And this will feed back to the back panel through the connector blocks. Uh, it also runs up to the e-stop terminals and we'll discuss that in greater detail here in just a minute. The timer needs a power wire and that daisy chains over and around to all of the PIDs. One thing I will tell you about wiring the PIDs, these jumper wires are pretty hard to get in there. So I would suggest when you do your project with your panel that you put in the jumper wires first before you put in the next daisy chain that goes around because those are a little difficult to get in sometimes. So, and then we also have the hot wire that runs for all of the alarms, which control the buzzer. So that comes around to all of the PIDs and the timer and then comes down to the switch that will allow you to actually turn on the buzzer itself. We've got the timer start button here. Then we've also got the power wires that come off of the two PIDs that control the SSRs. And something that's a little bit different with that situation is that the SSRs take DC voltage, not AC voltage. And if you don't know what that is, look that up. I'm not going to go through explaining all of that. But since the SSRs take DC voltage, the PID will actually convert the AC into DC. The black is a, is a negative and the colored wires are the positive. So those will actually run over to the SSRs and turn those on and off respectively. Now, one of the things that I did want to discuss in pretty good detail is the interrupter circuit as well as the e-stop circuit is kind of combined in the two. And that is the pink wire that runs through the entire system. Now, what that does is if the e-stop button is engaged, pushed in, it will actually break the circuit that makes all these 110 volt components work. Now it goes through the pump switches as well as the element switches. There's some connector blocks that are on top of the actual switch itself. And these are NC. The way this works is it has a circuit that runs through the switches over to the panel, the back panel to a relay circuit over there. And then that relay, it actually goes all the way, it comes all the way back and makes a connection back here on the e-stop button. We've also got some power wires that run in here, but I want you to take note of how this is wired. There'll be some other wires that'll come in here. There'll be the other pink wire from the, the terminal come in here. Then there'll also be a power wire from the main connect, main contactor over here in this terminal. And there'll also be a wire that comes into this side of the connector block from that relay circuit over there. And that actually prevents you from dry firing an element or running a pump dry. And that's a very important part of the control panel. And a lot of people get that wrong. So Ryan wanted me to go over that in detail. So you'll have a couple of pink wires here. You'll have a black wire or power wire that comes through and, and provides power to all the components here. You'll have a power wire that comes in from the back side of the uh, panel over there. And it'll power the lower portion, which actually will make everything run. 
And that is pretty much it for what we've done there. I'm gonna grab the back panel and kind of lay it side by side so you can kind of see how everything looks whenever it's completely open. All right, so this is just like a real quick high level overview of everything once it's together in the box. Obviously, it looks like spaghetti right now, but um, you've got both of the element wires themselves that will come into the front panel and those will be attached respectively to both of their element lights. So that was the reason that we hooked up those earlier in the build. You got both of your pump wires. Those two wires will go to the two pump switches respectively. You got a neutral wire that will come in and make contact and complete the neutral circuit. The pink wire will actually complete that interlock circuit here. And then there's also one up here. And that will be the one that actually comes in and makes the circuit over here. You've got the two wires that connect to the main contactor and those two wires will come in and attach to the key switch itself and that will allow the key switch to turn on the main contactor and it will get power because there'll be two wires that come in from the main power uh, twist lock plug here. The red wire here will come in and give power. There'll also be two red wires that come off of these contactor blocks and come to the power LED here. And this is a 220 volt light. So it will run one off of each side of this contactor block and actually make a connection here to this light so that whenever the system is powered on, you'll know that you have power to both sides of this terminal block and everything is operating properly. Like I said, that's a real high level overview. We'll go over it a little bit more in detail whenever we get the box, both pieces together, which will be the next video. So. Well, that about wraps it up for this video of the control panel series. I feel like we've really made a lot of progress this time and we're getting closer and closer to actually getting that panel done, plug it in, turn it on, set it up and brew with it. Um, I don't know if I mentioned if uh, you're new here and you haven't seen this announcement before, I have a control panel and it's right over my shoulder there. I don't need another control panel. So we're going to be probably doing something really cool with this. I haven't got all the details yet. I also want to let everybody know this sign over my shoulder here is now available on the Electric Brewing Supply website. I'll put a link down in the description down there. And as always, check the description for any kind of notes or uh, details that I might have missed. I also wanted to say thank you for everybody's support. Uh, several people have bought t-shirts. I really appreciate that. There's a link in the description below for ways to support the channel. And we certainly appreciate all the support. I try to make videos for you guys as much as I possibly can. And, and the more support I receive, the, the more videos that I can put out. So I really appreciate that. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe. This has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers. We will see you on the next video.